this video, we are going to talk about how we use and deploy our passive paravane stabilizers. Our Nordhaven boat attracts a lot of attention because the boats have a very unique profile and they're very recognizable and people are always coming up to us in marinas and in anchorages and asking questions about the boat. What's one of the most common questions that we get, Cass? What are those big pole thingies up there? That is right. So, yeah, people are always asking questions about what are those big poles up on top of the boat? What's that mast for on a powerboat? Why do you have a boom? The simple answer to that question is that everything is there to assist in deploying and using the paravane stabilizers. Right now we're running off the coast of Oregon. We've been on passage from the Pacific Northwest to San Francisco and we've been running for about three days. And you can see the outrigger over here is actually where the paravanes attach and are towed from. And they do a really good job of bucking out the roll. Any small uh, ocean crossing power boat needs some form of stabilization or it'll roll around uncontrollably in most offshore conditions. The most common thing that you'll see to stabilize power boats like this are active fins on the bottom of the boat. And we have those and they're nice because you can just push a button and they buck out all of the roll. But the downside to the active fins is that they, they drain some power from the engine and there's a lot of moving parts and points of failure. The paravanes are totally passive and the only downside to using them is they are a little bit of work to deploy and they cause about a half knot of uh, hit to speed. There are a lot of ways that paravane systems can be installed on boats and I think for that reason there's not a whole lot of documentation or instruction material about how to actually use them. They're used a lot on commercial fishing boats but most of those implementations are really different from the way that they're installed on our boat and for that reason I thought it would be kind of interesting to show how the paravane system was rigged by Nordhaven and how we actually use them. I'll start off by showing some of the key components and then I will go into a lot more detail about how we rigged the system for this passage down the west coast and how we actually use the paravanes when we're running offshore. One of the things that allows this boom and mast to be used for both hoisting the dinghy and for launching and retrieving the paravanes is the fact that it can rotate 90 degrees like this. So when we are launching and retrieving the dinghy, one of these hoists is set up as a topping lift to raise and lower the boom. 
And the one on the bottom here is the lift for actually plugging the dinghy out of the water. When we set it up to deploy the paravanes, what we do is rotate this boom 90 degrees like this, and then one of these becomes the port side hoist, and one of them becomes the starboard side hoist. And these will run through blocks on the end of the boom to each side, and that's what launches and recovers the fish so you don't have to do it by hand. It's a little bit of a pain to actually reconfigure this thing, not so much here, it's easy to rotate the boom. But what we have to do is we have to take the blocks that the control sheets here are attached to, we have to rotate those 90 degrees on the far end of the boom, and then we have to reconfigure a bunch of the blocks so that the line passes through the ends without having a twist in it. It's a fair amount of work, and when we actually have this thing in the configuration so that it can launch and recover the paravanes or the fish, then we can no longer launch and retrieve the dinghy. So I would actually prefer to have a dedicated davit for the dinghy. We just don't have a lot of room and they're expensive. So we make do with this thing being kind of to, to purpose. So I've lowered down the halyard that has this block that's at the top of the topping lift. So this specter line right here is attached to the winch and it was attached going up and down to the topping lift to raise and lower the boom. But when we use this for the paravanes, what I need to do is take the specter line out of here and we're gonna rotate the boom 90 degrees so that this line, instead of going up to the topping lift, it's going to be going out to either the port or the starboard side, depending on which way I rotate the boom. And then the boom is just supported now by a uh, manual halyard and not by this line that's attached to the winch. There's probably a lot of different ways to do this, but what I like to do is take this block that was attached to the top of the topping lift and I just secure it here against the mast and I take this halyard and I pull it down taut and then I just cleat this off down here. Now this is all secure so it won't bounce around too badly when we're out underway and this we don't need this for anything when it's in the paravane configuration. So what I'm doing down here is just moving these blocks around that guide all of the ropes that are attached to the end of this boom. These are the sheets that control the boom and right now they are moving the boom back and forth. This is the block that the dinghy goes up and down with into the water, and then the topping lift was up here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to rotate the boom. This uh, control sheet will end up on this position right here. This control sheet is gonna end up over on this one. And then these blocks will end up all coming down the bottom right here. And one of the lines is going to go out through a block out to the starboard side, and one of the lines is going to go out to the port side of the boat. Um, there's kind of a lot going on here. There's a lot of shackles. Some of this stuff I've got put together with these nice snap shackles that are pretty easy to release, which makes it a little bit quicker. Uh, some of the stuff I've got to pull pins and safety wire and stuff like that. And uh, it's a fair amount of work. It's kind of time consuming, but there's not really uh, any other way to do it. What I'm doing now is rigging the chains that actually support the paravanes when they're running to the fish right here. We've got these keepers that keep the fish from falling out of their holders that are just on little snap rings. And the chain itself attaches to this shackle right here. Where the shackle is positioned along the length of this thing right here, there's six holes, and where you position it fore and aft um, depends on the angle that the, the fish will actually run at and how deep it will dive. Uh, I've always just left them where they were rigged when we bought the boat. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, the one interesting thing that I learned there's no documentation for these paravanes in the owner's manual. The Nordhaven owner's manual is great. There's every single system is documented fully. The one thing that's lacking is the paravanes, which are rigged by the factory. The only thing that it says is they're easy to use. Have somebody show you and then you can do it. Uh, it's true enough that they are easy to use. When you have never done it before, it is kind of intimidating. And somebody gave me a set of instructions that was written for a Nordhaven 47, 
when we first bought this boat, he gave me a photocopied copy of it, another owner. Uh, and it was really useful. One of the things that was very interesting is it says that the screw on this shackle, that it needs to go through from the starboard side of the boat to the port side. So when this, fins, when this fish is actually running, the screw will go through that way. And what it said is if it's not installed that way, that even if the safety wire is on this shackle, that the thing can back out while the fish are running. So I've always just left it wired that way. Now I attach the actual chains to this shackle are just with a stainless steel link right here. So I'll unscrew this and put it on the shackle. And I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads just to prevent it from backing out while we are running the boat. Installed. I'm going to take this safety clip and put it back on and we will leave the fish in the holders here until we actually get out and deploy the fish when we're underwater. I'll do the same thing on the other side then we finally take the uh, the rope from the winches and hook those up to the chain. Now I've got everything rigged. The winch lines are attached to the shackles on the chains and the chains are going down to the fish on the back of the boat now. So the final thing we have to do is deploy the outriggers and I usually will do that on the anchor or when we're underway, but we're tied to a kind of a breakwater fuel dock here where there's no other boats on the dock, so I think I'm actually going to deploy the outriggers tonight before we leave the dock. We're heading around the uh, Cape Flattery tomorrow. Okay, so now I'm ready to deploy the port side outrigger. The first thing I do before we deploy the outriggers is take these kind of restraint shot cords off of the standing rigging. And the reason that uh, these things are on here is that this line right here, this wire rope is the four guy. This uh, attaches all the way out to the end of the outrigger and it counteracts all the forces that want to pull the outrigger back. And if we didn't have those cords on it, it would just be swinging around all over the place loose when the boat's underway. So I'll take that off. This four guy will just be kind of hanging here loose. And then I go up onto the boat deck and actually deploy the outriggers. So there's a control line for the outriggers that goes all the way up to the tip of the outriggers. I'll hold this with one hand. I'll give the outrigger a little push to get it going and then gravity just kind of pulls it down. And I just hold this line so that it doesn't get away from me. The outrigger will launch. And then all of the wire rope, the standing rigging just kind of holds it in place where it wants to sit naturally. And then there's a downhaul over here that I'll pull just to keep it from flopping up. So that's really all there is to it. And to uh, pull these back up, just do the opposite. The winch controller to raise this up. Now the chain's kind of tight. I'm going to lift this up out of the holder.
So I'm going to pull the pair of vanes in now. It's just the opposite of what we did to launch them. I used the same winch controller to control the lines to pull the fish back in. So it's pretty easy. It's just a simple button to pull the specter line back in. So now this line is pulling the fish back over towards the boat. And it's pretty slow. Looks like we actually hooked some kelp. We're moving forward at idle speed right now, too. I didn't mention that earlier. But the fish is just swimming here right below the water. And all of the work to lift it will be done by the winch and this line right here. I just have to kind of keep it off of the back of the boat with my hands. The fish is just below the water. This is the only part of it that's at all kind of dangerous or sketchy as far as banging this thing into the side of the boat. right below the water. Still using the winch to pull it up. Sometimes they kind of circle right at the top. There it is. So after I've got the fish back out, the final thing that I do is just adjust the, the tension on the lines that are attached to the winches just to keep the chains from banging around. I'll pull this one up. So now the chain is all kind of nice and tight and won't be banging around. 